is on the ground too. Um, we, actually, you can see this, Mark. I'm sorry. We, uh, we have a lady that tried to drive through. This is the one I was speaking about just a few minutes ago. She tried to drive through. I think this is Walerna Road by PFE. Glad you got you inside. Clear to come up. Air One, you're clear to come in too. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Trying to help out here with the uh, rescue ships coming. But you can see she fortunately climbed out into the back of her truck here. Uh, and then have something go wrong and then Lord yeah, knows what happens from that. One. Firecopter 1, they did just dispatch them. They do have a hoist. So, as we saw in the past floods, they'll come over, they'll go ahead and drop that hoist down with the horse collar. Don't know if they'll actually send a rescue fireman down, probably. They'll put her in the hoist, lift her back up into the helicopter, and get her over to dry land. Wearing a PFD and a helmet, of course, to protect them. There he is. He's outside of the helicopter as we speak. You know, this is kind of cool. It's kind of interesting to me. What got me into flying helicopters was I was with Tuolumne County. County search and rescue, and I did some swift water rescue training, and you see those guys on the shore there where they have those large paddles and the throw bags. They can actually try to ford the creek by keeping that paddle on the ground up river from them. That creates an eddy around them, makes the heavy flows go around, and allows you to go across, but that water is way too deep. You can see, boy, boy Brian's holding that helicopter pretty, uh, pretty stable. We'll have to give him kudos there. No swing, no twirling of the rescue unit. He is lowering the guy. He's literally right over the back of the truck. Now, this is a real coordinated effort because the pilot, at this point, I don't think he can even see the guy on the roof. You can see the other gentleman, the winchman that's handling the uh, the winch cable. He's actually in communication with the guy on the edge of the cable and the pilot. And he's telling Brian, three inches right, three inches left, whatever it takes to try to keep that guy literally right over the top of the truck. Very critical flying here, and he's doing a great job. Uh, look at the trees, though. Yeah, it is very difficult for the pilot. He cannot see the rescuer. He has a spotter above that is telling him where he needs to go, and they've got a very work in concert. And the training they do for this is just intensive. So one of the other advantages of this helicopter. One of the other advantages there. That's okay. It's one of the other advantages of this Bell helicopter is its ability to put a rescuer in this position. See, they're going to get her, get her lassoed up get her held up, and then we're going to take a short haul, take her off to a safe place where they can land and drop her and the rescuer off. <laughs> yeah, they're getting ready to pick her up here momentarily. They've just got her hooked in. You'll see he should signal, and um, Brian still got that helicopter exactly straight. You were talking about the Super mm -hmm. 4 helicopter that you guys use for this, one of the most stable helicopters that Bell has ever built, and, uh, boy, you guys outfitted it to the T, and we really can see the need for this in the Sacramento area. The fires, there she goes. She's out of the truck, Ron tilt down, and she's uh, now probably 15 to 25 feet up in the air. The fireman, see, he's looking right out the trees, so as we get a little closer to the brush, he could kick off. Brian is now moving the helicopter over towards the bank. He's uh, almost over dry ground. He's just going to go over the fence there. Then he'll be lowering her to safety here momentarily. So another a real big rescue. Kudos go out to Sac County Fire.